This presentation is for week 10 about jQuery. My name is Charles William Bill Marshall. Uh, that's my email address and cell phone that you can reach me during office hours. The best course is to send me an email, set up an appointment, and we can do a Microsoft Team meeting. And it is for CIT 253, which is a three credit hour course. And the course title is Data Driven Web Pages. As always, Blackboard is the official site for assignments and to turn in assignments. I do have a site, cwmclass.com, that you can also access. So do we even need jQuery? Well, what's how does jQuery and JavaScript... jQuery was created in 2006 by John Reeds. It was designed to handle browser incompatibilities and simplify the HTML DOM manipulation, event handling, animations, and AJAX. For more than 10 years, jQuery has been the most popular JavaScript library in the world. However, after JavaScript version 5, uh, JavaScript started modeling the jQuery utilities and they can be solved with a few lines of st standard JavaScript. So let's compare. If you're trying to find an element ID or an element by ID in jQuery, you would say this syntax. In JavaScript, you would do it that way. If you're trying to find it by name, you'd use that syntax in jQuery versus this syntax in straight JavaScript. You would do uh, cascading style this way in jQuery versus this way in standard JavaScript. If you're trying to set content in jQuery you would use this syntax while in JavaScript you would use that syntax. Uh, if you're going to change the content of text you could do it this way in jQuery and that way in JavaScript. If you're setting HTML contact, you would do it this way in jQuery, and as we've seen, this way in JavaScript. If you're trying to hide an element in an HTML element, you can do it that way in jQuery, that way in JavaScript. Show versus show. Uh, set style in jQuery versus JavaScript. Remove an element this way in J jQuery and that way in JavaScript. Parse that way in jQuery versus this way in JavaScript. So is jQuery dead? All the things that I just showed you, you couldn't do in JavaScript when it first when jQuery was first introduced and they empowered the internet. But there's some other packages. The real problem now is that there's a lot of packages that are based on jQuery. So I believe, and it's been my experience at least, that as long as you can, as you need to use these other packages, uh, since it's free anyway, I continue to include jQuery. Uh, you know, one of the reasons that we're talking about jQuery today is I want to introduce you to JTable, which I think is a really powerful utility that we need to use for this class. It's based on jQuery, so you need jQuery even though now it there are other functions, but you can't get all the auxiliary things that were built on its foundation to work unless you rewrite them, and that's really not time efficient. So what is jQuery? It's a lightweight, write less, do more JavaScript library. And the purpose is to make it much easier to use JavaScript on your website. And while it's true that now you could probably get by without jQuery, like I say, the ecosystem around jQuery means that I think you'll still use it for a long time. jQuery takes a lot of common tasks that require many lines of JavaScript code to accomplish wraps them into methods that you can call with a single line of code. If I have one concern about jQuery, it is that it can be so concise that you have to really watch what you're doing. 
And when you come back to decode, unless you're really comfortable with jQuery, it may not be obvious what's going on. jQuery also simplified a lot of the complicated things from JavaScript, like Ajax calls and DOM manipulation. The jQuery li library contains the following features, HTML DOM manipulation, cascading or cascading CSS cascading style sheet manipulation, HTML event methods, and Ajax plus utilities. Uh, but it's the plugins and the fact that there's a plugin for almost anything you can imagine that really today protects jQuery from being dropped and not used. Adding J to your jQuery to your website, there are several ways. You can download the jQuery library from jQuery, or you can include jQuery from a content, you know, a CDN like Google. Uh, if you want to download jQuery, there's two versions: a production version and a development version. Now, truth is, I always use the production version because I'm not that deep into the code. But if you want to get back to the development for testing, uh, you can get a copy of it. And that's really good as opposed to using some proprietary code that you can't see the innards of. But in both cases, you get it from jQuery.com. The jQuery library is a single JavaScript file. And you reference it in the HTML this way. You say script. Uh, notice that the script tag should be inside the head section. So you've got a head, this script, which is really a full path to where that file sits on your web server, and then the end of the head with whatever else you want to do. You place the downloaded file in the same directory as the pages you wish to use if you don't have any path on it. If you don't want to download and host the jQuery yourself, for us, I think you do because we have a server that's not necessarily connected to the internet. We're working on a Windows machine. But you can include a CDN, a content delivery network. Both um, Google and Microsoft host jQuery. Uh, and remember that uh, Microsoft is hosting a lot of things now. To use jQuery from Google or Microsoft, use one of the following. The Google CDN looks like this. And the Microsoft one looks like that. Remember, in both cases, you have to have a web server that's connected to the internet. And like I say, we haven't spent the time to get ours hooked up. We're all working off local host. The jQuery syntax is tailor-made to selecting HTML and performing some actions on the elements. The basic syntax is dollar sign to say it's jQuery, a selector and then an action. So a dollar sign defined that it's jQuery. The a selector is a query or a find of an HTML element. jQuery action is performed. What do you want to do? So this, whatever I'm in, hide it, hides the current element. The dollar P, the quoted P, hides all the P elements paragraph elements. The dot, the quoted dot test hides all the elements with a class test. The quoted dollar test hide hides the elements with the ID test. So note that a dot is for the class and a pound sign is for the element. jQuery methods should usually be inside the document ready event. This prevents jQuery code from running before the document is finished loading and is ready. It's good practice to wait for the document to be fully loaded and ready before working with it. It also allows that you have your J JavaScript code before the body of your document in the head section. Here are some examples of actions that could fail if the methods run before the document is fully loaded. 
trying to hide an element that's not yet created or trying to get the size of an image that's not yet loaded. And so we're going to have the document ready condition and then we're going to that's the end of it. So this is the function that happens on document ready and that's where we're going to put the jQuery. The jQuery selectors allow you to select and manipulate HTML elements. The jQuery selector is used to find the element based on their name, ID, class, types, attributes, values of attributes, and much more. It's based on existing CSS selectors and in addition with some of some some own custom selectors, some of its own custom selectors. All selectors in jQuery start with the dollar sign in the parentheses. The jQuery element selector selects elements based on the element name. Alright, and so we can select, ele select all the paragraph elements this way like we showed you. And here's an example. The dollar ID selector finds on a specific element on the ID. An ID should be unique within a page, so you should use the ID selector when you want to find a single unique element. So it would look like that. And here's an example of doing that. The dot class selector identifies a specific class. To find an element with a specific class, write with a period. So we're saying everything of class test we're going to hide. If your website contains a lot of pages and you want your jQuery functions to be easy to maintain, you can put the jQuery functions in a separate JS file. Or This is convention, but the truth is if you do it right, it will find whatever file you put it there, but the world thinks if it's JavaScript or jQuery you ought to have that extension just to help keep sanity. Well, uh, that's really good on a big site because you may have login or some functions that you want to include many places and it's you don't want to have to update 25 different pages. Uh, on our s small sites, I'm not sure it's worth the effort, but you're certainly welcome to experiment with it and make your own decision. When we demonstrate jQuery in this tutorial, the functions are added directly into the head section. However, sometimes it's preferable to place them in a separate file and use the source attribute to refer to it. So, here's an example, and we talked about source last lecture where we're pulling in a specific file. jQuery event methods. What are events? All the different visitor actions that a web page can respond to are called events. So, you know, mouse up, mouse over, you can look at them all up, but you s can truly not do anything around a web page that's not firing events. And jQuery is going to give you a way to respond to them as appropriate. An event represents a precise moment when somebody wants something to happen. Uh, examples are moving a mouse over an element, selecting a radio button, clicking on an element. The term fires or fired is often used with events. Example, the key press event is fired the move moment you press the key. In jQuery, most DOM events have an equivalent jQuery method. To assign a click event to all the paragraphs on a page, you could do this. The next step it would be to define what happens when the event fires. You can pass a function to the event. So inside this parentheses, we're going to put the function that we want to happen. And whenever we get a click, it's going to fire and that function will happen. Now there's much more available on jQuery and I'm not going to try to read down through all of this, but I highly recommend that you spend the time 
And I don't want you to memorize it, but skim and get familiar with the concepts because you'll be at a website and you can go back and get the detailed syntax. But this address takes you to a really good tutorial. And I suggest that you go from jQuery Home here to jQuery Filtering down here. Uh, but most of this talk about jQuery was simply so that we could use functions and software packages that have been built around jQuery. And the one that I needed to get to is called jTable. And you can go to this URL and read about it in depth. But jTable is a jQuery plugin that's used to create Ajax-based CRUD tables without coding HTML or JavaScript. And I find it very powerful and I think will help uh, for your building of web pages for this application. It certainly helps you move data. I think you can make it do a lot of things. This is not to say that every page, every data website you build from now on should depend on this. And if you have something else you want to use for your project, that's perfectly fine. But it is a really good package that in also demonstrates JSON and AJAX and is powerful and I think will bring value to your project. All right, so what's CRUD stand for? Create, read, update, and delete. JTable automatically creates HTML table and loads records from the server using AJAX. It cre the create new record jQuery user interface dialog form. When a user creates a record, it sends data to the server using AJAX, adds the same record to the table in the page. Uh, it creates an edit record. The user interface dialog form, when the user edits a record, it updates the server using AJAX and updates all the cells of the table on the page. Allows user to delete a record with the user interface shows animations for create, delete, edit operations on the table, supports server-side paging using AJAX, uh, supports server-side sorting using AJAX, supports master-child tables, allows users to select rows, allows users to resize columns, allows users to show and hide columns, exposes some events to enable validation on with a form. Uh, it can be localized to uh, your local languages easily. All the styling of table forms are defined in cascading style sheets, so you can easily change the style of everything that you want. Um, don't know that you need to do that for this class project because we're really not trying to focus on cascading style sheets, but the CSS file is very well defined and commented. It comes with predefined color schemes. It is not dependent on any server-side technology, so if you want to use PHP or uh, Ruby on Rails or whatever you want on the server-side, as long as it can use AJAX and generate uh, JSON, it's fine. It is platform independent and works on all common browsers. All right. So we can check out the demonstration tutorials at this URL. But let's actually try to go through and use JTable. Uh, we need to develop a CRUD or create, retrieve, update, and delete on our state table. Uh, first thing we got to do is declare the div. Where do we want to put the JTable? To initialize JTable instance, we call JTable method ready in document like this. So when we get down to document ready function, we've got a my container and a JTable, and then we talk about the general options, actions, the actions we want to take here, and then the fields. And the actions are do we want to list, do we want to update, do we want to delete? What what is possible with this data? You may have data that you don't want to be able to delete. Table has types of options. General options define the general behavior of the JTable instance. 
The actions define how to communicate between the client and the server for the different actions. And the fields define the structure of the record to create, edit forms and tables. JTable defines a row and a table as a record. So a record must have fields as fields of a relational database table. And that relationship of what you see on the screen and what's behind it is how you do the update and list and so forth. So we're going to go to this download demo and download and unzip that file. And when we do, we're going to see these tables for samples and scripts and JTable uh, and themes. We're going to go to our doc root on your Apache web server. In my case, it's here. And I changed the scripts download to JQ scripts just because scripts seem to me like something that I might want to save for future use. And then I created a themes and drag them in here. And so here's the initial try. I've got a HTML, the heading of it. I'm bringing in all the files that I need that we've talked about. Notice that I changed scripts to JQ scripts. We start the body and I've got my first PHP Ajax and this. And if that looks like it's I'm using the basic HTML that I had last time, you're right. That'll change over time. But we've got the div where we're talking about the state table is the ID. Then we start the document ready function and I'm saying it's going to be J table associated to the ID state table. The title is going to be table of states. And the actions I want, I want list, create, update, and delete. They're all going to call a function called, or a program called state table.php. And we're going to pass uh, with a get because this isn't data that I'm worried about to tell the program what we want to do. We're going to define the fields. We have state code and state name and the end of the script and the end of the body. So when I try to run it, in fact, it doesn't talk to anything, but it shows that I've got everything connected and that's good news. But when I put the list action and run against the code that I'm getting ready to show you, I can test to see what it, what's happening behind the scenes by taking the URL that we had here and just pasting it into a browser. And so when I do that, I see that I have an undefined line at 15. And when I come down and look, this is the source code of state table.php. So I'm opening up my connection. And then I'm doing my select from state demo order by state code. And you may already, once you see an error, it's easy to see. But until then, it's hard. Well, how can I tell what SQL I'm using? Well, I've got a debug statement I'm putting in a variable debug. I'm echoing SQL and then echoing that into test2, a file. I can take what that SQL that I got from that file, paste it into my SQL's SQL screen, and try to run it. And it blows up. And as I read it, it's talking about Oh, look, I've got O-R-D-R-E instead of O-R-D-E-R. -E when I change it to E-R and try again to run it just from the URL, I get the JSON that I'd hoped for. So the program ended up looking like when the action equals list, select, uh, build the query, take the number of rows, while I've got a row, I'm going to put row, I created an array called rows, 
and I'm going to put this row into the array rows. At the end of the while, I'm going to free result. I'm going to close the connection. And now I've got to send it back. So I'm creating a jQuery called table result, and it's an array. And the first element of the array is going to be result, and it's OK. And the second element is going to be records, and I'm going to put in the, the array of that I got. And then I'm going to say print JSON in code that, which is going to send it back where I called it from. And when I run it back from the web page, I get a list of the tables of the states that I had. Life is good. All right. So now I've got to do the same thing for an insert because if I was going to add a table, I would click a row, I'd click here. If I was going to edit, I would click here for this row. And if I wanted to delete this row, I would do that. Well, we've told it how to list them, but we haven't told how to add. So I can come to my SQL, pick the table that I'm interested in, go to the SQL tab, click Insert, and it will give me the SQL that I need. Now, on this one, with only two fields, it's nearly trivial. But I can assure you, when you get into 30 and 40 fields, being able to let MySQL give you the syntax is a wonderful thing. So, I'm now down to the else if, if the get action was create, I'm going to send these out, and that's just purely debugging. I'm going to say an SQL I for the insert SQL is this value, which I just took from the pattern we gave it. But now I've got to get values in here, so I'm going to uh, real escape string to stop SQL injection, the post value state code that came in, and do the same thing for the post value of state name. And notice the games I'm playing to get the right double quotes and single quotes. So this is going to be values, single quote. We get a value, and then we're going to get a single quote, comma, single quote. Then another value, single quote, close parentheses, semicolon. And then that semicolon is ending that PHP command. This is a debug so that I can see what insert I've done. When I look at the command, I see that it's going to generate that value. If I cut and paste that into and press go, it tells me that it worked. So that's a way to test the SQL being generated by my PHP program. And here is the create section of the program after everything's working. And this is just to tell me that at line 57 the SQL was that. Uh, so if we got a if we got a bad result, we exit. Otherwise, we created a row that's an array. We set the state code equal to what was sent in and the state name that was sent in. Now notice that I'm not doing the, the real escape strings. And a purist might ought to do that. But this values are never going to be used for S to run SQL. So I was lazy and didn't put that in. But to be perfectly correct, we should have escape string them there also. Uh, so we've got a J table result that's an array. We're setting the result the, uh, of the array to OK. And we're setting back the row. And that's the name of that tune. OK, what would we have done if instead of a state code that the user keyed in, it was an auto-generated number? Well, we would have done something like row site ID equals the connection and the insert ID. And that will that value will have 
the last time it inserted an auto-generated number, it will tell you what that number was. So if we want to add a record, it looks like this. We click plus, it comes up with a state code, a state name, we key that in, and it works. Now, if we're going to update for the action update, again our debug, we're going to, and we can get it from the MySQL the same way. And this ought to all look fairly typical, except we're updating where state code equals, and this is called the JT record key. Because we said state code was a record key, we're not going to, if, if we have a state called KY code, you can change Kentucky, you can re-change that, but you can't change the primary key. And so this assures that we always put back, we change in the state name, but we're not changing the code because that is the primary key. We've got our debug statement. We've got our exit if it didn't work. And again, we're putting the values back. And that's the end of that. We have the situation where somebody wants to delete by clicking on a trash can. And the delete action looks like uh, if the action is delete, we build the SQL. Again, we can get that from the MySQL suggestion. And then we'll return. And this is different in that we don't have to send anything back other than tell them that the result was OK. And so that's a fully working JavaScript program that lets us edit the state. There's other tricks jQuery JTable can do. We've got the header detail relationships, and this is in a website that I wrote for another purpose. This is the Maysville Industrial Opportunities. And so we have a site, and then if you click on this icon, it brings down who are the contacts for that site. If you click on this icon, it brings down all the, all the information links that you can have about a site. You can also have pickers to limit choices so that you can have gender, male, female, or you can look up from a table. And I'm not going to cover all those details because the object of this course is not to make you an expert in JTable. I think with your exercise today, you'll have enough to get your basic projects done if you decide to use that. And if you don't want to use JTable on your projects, that tickles me to death. I just wanted to give you at least one Ajax type tool that you could use for your web database web pages. All right, class assignment for this week. I've just, and I've got source code I'm going to show you in Blackboard. I want you to build a JTable page that allows editing of your SKU table. Early on when we did MySQL, you built an SQL table. I want you to be able to edit your SKU table just like I demonstrated how to edit the state table. You have a current work in progress on your class project. I want to see it as the problem statement, the business rules or constraints, and the ERD in the toad format. We've done that. This is several iterations, and now we're the next step up. I want to see a mock-up of PowerPoint, and I'll show you that I don't really want any great detail, or I'm not looking for your artistic content, but I'm looking for your thoughts on your three most important web pages in your class project. Uh, and four, I want you to, maybe not storyboard, but walk me through what steps read pages that you think a user, or actions that you think a user will take. I'm not sure what a successful contact on your website is, but based on your problem statement, you ought to 
fairly well be identified what it is that you're trying to have your website do. What I'm looking for is an, the overview of when everything goes as you hope it will go, what are the steps that a user will take from when they approach your website to log on to when they've accomplished the task you are hoping you can encourage them to do. And here's the level of detail, so not very high. Uh, a title up here that just tells me that's landing page, and this is PowerPoint and something I think you can put together pretty quickly. Uh, I think the landing page is going to have up here a link to a user account where they there's some way that they can go to do the maintain their user accounts or passwords and whatever. And a welcome of current news that's graphics or whatever's appropriate for you so that the first thing the person sees as they come in your front door is going to be here or are you going to have some other variation this is not this should be I'm just trying to show you the level of detail that I'm looking for for these web pages I don't want you to spend a lot of time beautifying them what I want to know is the concepts of how you envision you know so log in is a fairly easy one and it, don't know if there's going to be many variations on username and password uh, is it going to be a drop down is it going to be a full screen what sh how do you envision it are you going to have advertising here disclaimers what uh, and if they clicked in my top one and went to the user info what would they see would there be a menu bar on this side with a div out here that lets people do whatever's in the request or or what Again, you can do it in PowerPoint. You can do it in smoke signals. I just want you to demonstrate to me that you're starting to think of the flow and the presentation that you're going to use to present your data. And so that's the IT 253, 3-hour three credit, week 10, jQuery. I hope that this has been helpful. As always, I'm sure that there will be questions, or I hope there are questions. That's part of the object. Uh, if I can help clarify anything, or I certainly want to do that, call me. Well, first send me an email to this email address. Let's set up a time. Uh, if you need to call me during office hours, that's the cell phone number. Uh, preferable is that we schedule a time and set up a Microsoft Team meeting so that you and I can see each other's desktops. Don't forget that each week we need to be having a 15-minute uh, team meeting with each of you so that uh, we can, I can see your progress and answer any questions you have. This is kind of the last building block of coding technology. We've now got all the pieces all the way from Apache up through JTable uh, with MySQL database behind. So we're now at the place where I think you have your tools. The rest of the course is going to be trying to help you use those tools to deliver your data-driven web pages. Thank you.